Yaakov Avinu. Right? Oh, we're going to get to Yaakov Avinu in a second. So he starts with a stipler, though. Uh, we start with Yaakov Kanyeski, Shalom, the father of Chaim Kanyeski. He brings a story that once, uh, what happened once, that he accidentally pushed an eight year old kid. And uh, it was by accident. He was. Uh, so what happened was he pushed them by accident and, uh, and he didn't forget about it. He wanted to ask for forgiveness. We know that Yom Kippur, you don't get to get mehila unless you get mehila for forgiveness from the person. Then Hashem can forgive you. If you don't ask forgiveness from the person, you hurt. So Hashem can't forgive you. And he doesn't forgive you. And then, uh, and then what? And some say, some poskim uh, say, that doesn't mean he doesn't forget you, forgive you for this sin. He doesn't forgive you in general if you don't ask for a mehila for that person. And in everything, he doesn't forgive you. Haz shalom. So therefore, what did he do? He waited till he was bar mitzvah. The day he became bar mitzvah, he went and knocked on his door and asked him for mehila from that uh, eight-year-old boy that he pushed by accident. So you say, oh, what, this rabbi is so, such a big rabbi, why would he go and bother himself to ask forgiveness? Let the boy come to him or let him just forget about it. No. Yeah, no matter who he hurt, he has to make sure that he has... He wanted him to be a gadol. He wanted him to be a real mehila, a gadol mehila. You say he should be an adult. I guess that's what I'm thinking. But the point is that we have to apologize. Whoever we think we wronged, we should apologize. It's not worth it. What is it worth it? It's worth having gava, not asking mehila, and then God doesn't forgive you in Kippur. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So then we bring Yaakov Avinu, right? We know the most difficult people sometimes to deal with is not your wife. And it's not your parents. Even harder sometimes is your in-laws. Kudo. So what happens? We, you know, Yaakov you know, had problems with his kudo, with his in-laws, with his amak, right? His father-in-law. And what did he do? We see that he asked Lavan for his daughter. And he knew Lavan was Ramai. He knew he was a trickster. So he said, I want your daughter, the youngest one. Her name is Rachel. He said explicitly what he wants. He works seven years. The next day he gets? Leah. <laughs> Leah. So what does he do? Person usually would go back to the store. He said, hey, I ordered this and you gave me this. What is this? I want my money back, full sale. I'll make a what's going on? But we see Yaakov, he doesn't do that. What does he do? He comes calmly and he says to Lavan, what do you have to say for yourself? What is this, why you did this to me? He tells him, oh, he gave him some baloney. He said, oh, in our country, we don't give the younger one before the older one. And then Yaakov, you know, what does he say? He doesn't say, I don't care, give me what I want. He says, okay. Give me Rachel. No, you have to work seven more years. And Yaakov says, okay, I'll work for you seven more years. He works another seven years. He gives him Rachel. He gives him Rachel. And then he says, okay, time to, to, to pay me, pay me. He says, okay, I'll pay you from the sheep. Whatever sheep is uh, dots and striped and this and that, you're going to get. And all of a sudden, all the sheep started being born with stripes and dots and all these things. So then uh, Yavan saw all the, all the sheep is going to belong to Yaakov. So he changed his, uh, his, his, his price, he changed his wages, he changed his pay. And then the, the, the Chazal tells us he changed over a hundred times. Now Lavan told Yaakov, no, no, I'm not going to pay you, uh, uh, you know, $5,000 uh, a month. Now I'm going to pay you 900 No, no, not, not, not 800 No, no, not 800 not 700 and He goes a hundred times back and forth Lavan. A person would already lose their brain and they would go, leave me alone. But what? Yaakov says, okay, 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 no problem. Okay, okay. Finally, Hashem gives a sign. To Yaakov, you know, time to leave. It's okay, leave Lavan. Take, take what you need and go. And Yaakov took his family and left. Lavan is chasing him. And the uh, Chazal tells Lavan was ready to attack and to kill Yaakov. He, it says, Arami, Avadavi, right? It says that Arami tried to uh, destroy my nation. Who's Arami? It's Lavan. And what? And on top of that, Lavan accused Yaakov that you stole my trafim, you stole my idols. What did you do to me? What's wrong with you? And in the end, what did he do? He didn't fight with him. He didn't. He didn't hurt him. Yaakov just tells him, "Listen, what do you want from me? What did I do wrong to you? I'll fix it. What do you want? What, why, why fighting?" So you see, this is very powerful from Yaakov. We you know how to deal with family. A lot of times, family members get upset. Just go. A guy's screaming and yelling at you. What did Yaakov you know, do? He hugged him. He said, "Why are we fighting? No, I don't want to fight with you. Tell I did something wrong. Tell me, I'll fix it." Even though Yaakov you know, had a million reasons to say why Lavan was wrong and he was right, what did Yaakov you know, do? What did I do wrong? Tell me. It's okay. Okay, no problem. I'll fix it. It's okay. Even though in my heart, I know this guy is off the walls. This guy is a uh, nut job. It's okay. Okay, what do you What do you want? What's bothering you? I'll fix it. Let's be shalom. Main thing is we be shalom. You can't fight with somebody 
who it's one sided fight. You know, he's he's trying to punch and you you hugging. How can you have a fight? There's no you kill the whole fight. When two people are fighting, then it's a fight. But if you just kill them with happiness, kill them with joy, kill them with love, so that's it. You ruin you ruin the whole fight. The fight's gonna go away. So we learned this from Yaakov. Tell me what I did wrong, and I'll fix it. Let us realize that the the way to be able to make mechila with anybody is be the first one. People always think, no, I'm gonna wait till they call me and they ask mechila. They should ask me. You know who I am. Hazashalom. We have to learn from Yaakov and say, put your head down, be humble. And give mechila on Yom Kippur. Depends if you're humble and you call first and tell them, ask them, tell me what I did wrong, forgive me, and I hope, and I hope I, you 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 forgive me also, and I will forgive you also. If someone use that, they know that you always uh, more hard. They're gonna say, okay, you know, let's. They're gonna use that advantage, take advantage yeah, of you. Advantage. You should realize that at the end of the day, Hashem sees, and Hashem will protect you, and Hashem will reward you for being humble. Baruch Na'olam.